Oh, Warner Brothers, what are you doing to us? In your time, you've given us some of the best comic book movies ever, but then you tried to jump on the Marvel Extended Universe bandwagon, except without all the planning and patience and quality control, and you ended up delivering absolute shite. Remember Suicide Squad, everyone? Remember thinking, wow, this Harley Quinn is awesome. I really hope she gets to star in her own goofy, cartoonish, R-rated female empowerment movie alongside a bunch of characters nobody ever heard of. <laughs> nah, me neither. Birds of Prey and the Fansabulous Mans... Ah, uh, oh, fuck off, film. Stop trying to be funny and quirky. Birds of Prey is a garbage movie, and I mean that in the most literal sense of the word. It's disposable entertainment of the highest order, something you're expected to consume with absolutely zero thought or intelligence and then promptly forget about, just like the people who made it. A vanity project spun off from a failed superhero team-up that nobody cared about. A vapid, self-indulgent, meaningless, badly written, horribly paced conglomeration of different ideas that work together about as effectively as Kathleen Kennedy and directors who are capable of independent thought. Pitched to a market that doesn't exist and starring a bunch of actors who aren't big or interesting enough to get arses in seats. In short, it was a complete fucking chore to get through and for the next 10 minutes I'm going to explain exactly why. Join me as I review Birds of Prey. So the film picks up some time after the events of Suicide Squad. I guess Jared Leto is still in the huff with Warner Brothers, so the Joker is suspiciously absent from this film. Instead, he's broken up with Harley Quinn after taking credit for a bunch of crimes that she apparently planned, because she was the real mastermind behind everything he did, don't you know? I'm not about to let a man take credit for a woman's work. Fuck off, Ruby Rose. But get used to this kind of subtle messaging, because you'll be seeing a lot of it in this movie. Anyway, this is all bad news for her, because she spent the past few years acting like a total asshole without fear of reprisal. But if news gets out that the Joker dumped her, she's completely screwed. Now you might think it would make sense for her to leave Gotham and find a new place to live, but nah, she just hangs around and keeps acting like everything's cool. So she goes to a nightclub and gets totally shit-faced and breaks a guy's legs because he got mad when she spilled a drink on him. <laughs> What's a delightful character? That's when we're introduced to the antagonist of the movie, although I use the word reluctantly because I'm too drunk to think of anything more appropriate for this absolute goon. Roman Sionis is the sadistic owner of the nightclub and one of the big crime lords in Gotham. He puts up with Harley's bullshit because he thinks she's still under the Joker's protection, but not for long. Harley decides she needs to get over the Joker properly, and what better way to do it than to steal a gas tanker and drive it straight into the chemical plant where they first got together. You know, I could point out that a massive chemical explosion in the middle of a crowded city would almost certainly cause untold damage to the environment and the health of millions of people living in the affected area, not to mention killing dozens if not hundreds of innocent civilians actually working at the plants. But the script is like, nah, it'll be fine. Anyway, word soon gets out that Harley is no longer under the Joker's protection, so a couple of goons try to abduct her outside Roman's nightclub. But in comes Black Canary, a singer who for some reason is also skilled enough to beat two fully grown men in hand-to-hand -hand combat. <laughs> You go, girl. Roman happens to notice this little alleyway fight, so he hires Black Canary to be his new limo driver because his old one has two broken legs courtesy of Harley Quinn. He sends Black Canary to retrieve a very special diamond for him that used to belong to one of Gotham's big crime families before they all got assassinated. The diamond's important because it contains the bank accounts where they've hidden their family fortune. Okay. But it all goes tits up when a teenage pickpocket named Cassandra steals the diamond from an incompetent henchman. Because all men are incompetent in this movie, I guess. Only to get arrested and taken to a nearby police station. So she takes the stolen diamond and swallows it in full view of the cops sitting right next to her. Okay. Meanwhile, a Gotham detective named Montoya... My name is Inigo Montoya. 
is investigating a murder carried out by a mysterious crossbow assassin. Montoya is a tough-talking, no-nonsense cop who keeps getting held back because her male colleagues take credit for her work. I am not a merry man! Uh... So Montoya catches up with Harley and tries to capture her, and it made me laugh until I was in danger of pissing myself because Rosie Perez is 55 years old and she moves with all the speed and agility of me after two bottles of whiskey. Anyway, Harley escapes only to run straight into more of Roman's goons, who take her to his nightclub so he can torture her to death. But then she somehow talks him out of it by saying that she can recover the missing diamond for him, because apparently she's really good at finding things. What? You don't need to find the diamond, you dick. You already know where it is. It's inside Cassandra, who's inside the police station. You don't need a detective for this one. You need a fucking assault team. But the genius script is like, nah, it'll be fine, because it needs to get Harley out of this situation and move in again, and it can't think of a smarter way to make it happen. So Roman lets her go on the promise she'll recover the diamond for him, because it's not like she could just skip town on him and disappear forever. For the purposes of this movie, Gotham City is basically the only place in the universe that actually exists. Did a fucking kindergartner write this? Anyway, Harley goes to the police station, which I guess must be staffed by the dumbest, most incompetent cops on the planet, because she's able to fight her way inside single-handed, and not one cop thinks to radio for reinforcements, or return fire on her, or do anything except stand there waiting to get shot. Honestly, you could replace these idiots with cardboard cutouts, and the scene would play out pretty much the same. So she gets down to the cells and springs Cassandra, but she also releases all the other prisoners by accident. And because literally everyone in this city fucking hates Harley Quinn, they all decide to attack her instead of, you know, escaping. Come on! Let's get nuts! Cue another cringeworthy fight scene with some extremely accommodating stuntmen. You know how it's kind of implausible that someone of Margot Robbie's size and build could defeat even a single heavily built man in a balanced engagement? Well, multiply the implausibility factor by roughly a dozen and you'll have some sense of how this scene plays out. Everyone waits their turn to attack. Everyone swings and misses. Everyone gets taken out by a single punch, because that's totally all it takes to floor a 200 pound man. Harley just churns through them all and escapes with Cassandra like it was nothing. <laughs> Now, all of these various events probably sound like convoluted nonsense to you, and frankly, they are. But basically, there are five main plot threads running through the movie. 1. Roman wants to recover the diamond inside Cassandra and kill Harley. 2. Harley plans to trade Cassandra in exchange for her own life. 3. Black Canary is now a reluctant enforcer for Roman. 4. Montaya is trying to arrest Harley. 5. Some arseholes going around assassinating people with a crossbow. Eventually, all the various parties converge on an abandoned amusement park, which for some reason is still fully functional because the script says we need to have a fight scene in the funhouse. And all the girls learn to put aside their differences and work together to smash the patriarchy. Sorry, I mean defeat Roman and his henchmen. That calls for even more cringeworthy fight scenes with even more accommodating stuntmen, and then Roman dies, Cassandra shits out the diamond, and the movie ends. And that's it, that's the plot for Birds of Prey. Sorry if I kinda glossed over that last part, but honestly, by that point in the movie, my brain was turning into lumpy porridge, and I was struggling to remember where I even was, or what was happening. Assessing Birds of Prey is a tricky prospect, because there are so many things wrong with it, it's hard to know where to start. So I guess I'll tackle it in no particular order, because that's exactly how this movie chooses to tell its story. See what I did there? The story is told from Harley's point of view, and because she's the very definition of an unreliable narrator, events are shown out of sequence and usually make no sense to begin with. Then she'll realise she missed out some important shit and go back and fill in the blanks later. I guess the writers watched a lot of Guy Ritchie movies before they did this film, because Birds of Prey is trying painfully hard to copy his fast-paced, non-linear storytelling style. It'll even do that freeze-frame thing where a new character gets introduced and show a little montage of their personal history to give them some quick backstory. The difference here is that Guy Ritchie understands how to craft an intelligent, well-structured story that functions on its own merits. The flashbacks and additional scenes are there to add new context and different meaning to established
established events, instead of literally explaining stuff that makes no sense initially. That's the difference between talented, intelligent screenwriters who actually understand how to put together a smart story that keeps people invested, and dumb, talentless hacks trying in vain to copy them. Anyway, the movie eventually decides non-linear storytelling is too hard and settles into a bog-standard format for the second and third acts. Which brings me neatly along to another problem. The pacing of Birds of Prey is all over the place. The first act is frantic and hyperactive, laying on so many out-of-sequence events, characters and plot threads that it's hard to even know what's going on half the time. But then it all just kind of grinds to a halt around the 40-minute mark, and this is where Birds of Prey really starts to drive. The film's 109 minutes long, but honestly it feels like well over 2 hours. They could have cut about 20 minutes of padding and it would have made for a leaner, more effective story. Instead, it feels overstuffed with too much shit that drags it down. Another problem is the characters. For a start, there's too fucking many of them, and the script doesn't know what to do with them half the time. Harley and Black Canary are the only ones that get any real development. Huntress is a total non-entity with no personality or screen presence, who only shows up in like the last 20 minutes anyway. And Mary Elizabeth Winstead plays her like she literally got handed the script 30 seconds before shooting began. Cassandra might have been interesting in the hands of a better actor, but Ella J. Basco is a complete plank of wood in this film. She can't act to save her life, and it's especially obvious next to Margot Robbie. Black Canary is the standout for me, both in terms of character and performance. She's the only one who looks like she can actually fight. She's also one of the only characters to have a meaningful arc. She starts off as a lowly club singer, just keeping her head down and barely getting by in life, but her talents land her in difficult situations and she's forced to do bad things for worse people until eventually she stands up for herself and risks her life to help others. And I couldn't help but think, man, I'd much rather see a Black Canary movie than this Harley Quinn bullshit. Which I guess brings me to the biggest problem in this film, Harley Quinn herself. See, I'm not convinced this is the kind of character you really want to base a whole movie around. She can be funny and quirky at times, and there's a certain charm in how ridiculous her outlook is, but that kind of thing gets old pretty fast. And if there's no real substance beneath the flashy, superficial crap, there's nothing to keep you invested in the character. She's like a bout of explosive diarrhea. She's tolerable, maybe even kind of fun in small doses, but 109 minutes of her without relief just becomes a pain in the arse. The entire movie is built on the premise that Harley Quinn doesn't need anyone else to define her, but ironically, it kind of proves the opposite. She doesn't really define herself because there's not much to define. She doesn't change, grow, or develop in this film. She's still the same destructive, immature, selfish arsehole she was at the beginning of the movie. Her only revelation is that she's gotten over her breakup with Joker, but does that really justify 109 minutes of screen time? Birds of Prey was marketed as a strongly feminist film. It's got a mostly female cast, a female writer, and a female director. Although it's worth pointing out that they had to bring in a man to direct the action scenes because Kathy Yan didn't know what she was doing. <laughs> Either way, the movie really goes all in with the girl power angle. There's the usual tropes like skinny 90 pound women beating the crap out of very accommodating stunt men, not to mention multiple examples of men taking credit for women's accomplishments, and of course, every single male character in the film is portrayed as sadistic, arrogant, selfish, emotionally unstable, weak, vain, cowardly, and totally deserving of the violence the women inflict on them. Even the cardboard cutout police officers who are just doing their job at the end of the day. The script is actually kind of an interesting insight into the minds of present day feminism when you think about it. It, a protagonist that's self-destructive, narcissistic, violent, unstable, selfish, and refuses to take responsibility for her actions, lashing out at a world where every single man is portrayed as the enemy? Talk about a product of its time. But really, how many normal, well-adjusted people who don't spend 20 hours a day on Twitter are gonna get behind something like that? By all accounts, not many. Birds of Prey is already flopping hard at the box office, and when I stop to ponder why, I find myself coming back to the same question I asked of Charlie's Angels. Who was this movie even made for? It's not for men, that's for sure. The marketing made it clear this is a movie about female empowerment, misogyny, and everyday sexism, which doesn't exactly scream light-hearted fun for most guys. 
The R rating means that most families won't go to see it, and even women don't seem to care about it. Probably because they now have a pretty good sense of when they're being pandered to, and they're not as dumb as Hollywood seems to think. You can't just slap the term female empowerment on a crappy film and expect them to flock to it. Ultimately, Birds of Prey feels like a rushed, poorly conceived vanity project spawned from a mediocre superhero film and based around an actress with an overinflated sense of her own star power. Margot Robbie is listed as one of the three producers of this film, and from what I understand, she was a big driving force in getting it made. Now, Robbie is a perfectly good actress, and let's be honest, she's not exactly hard on the eye either, but she's more of a rising star than a real box office draw, and I think that, just like her character, this movie was an attempt to prove she could stop leaning on her male co-stars and strike out on her own. Unfortunately, its failure to connect with audiences kind of demonstrates the opposite. Better luck next time, Harley. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.